Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, me to read Horseman about season two of the Villains of Valley View on Disney Channel. Welcome back to the show, man. It's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, it's still, you know, another another season, but same same title. Same title with so many Vs and the villains of value view. <laughs> it's a workout for sure. You got to, you got to, it's like our vocal warmups we do before shooting. It's like, just do it over and over again. It sticks eventually. Absolutely. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to waste time because I saw some interviews that you and the cast did kind of at carpets and everything talking about how this season is bigger, this season is better, there's so much more happening this season. In your opinion, what is kind of the element or thing you love the most about season two of the show that makes it kind of bigger and better, as you were saying in those interviews? Um, Pretty easily, I can say the thing that just just sets season two apart from the first is you know, and, and and this is how it is with every first season, you know, you're kind of finding your footing with the character after a while and everyone's kind of finding their groove. The writers are kind of figuring out how you work as far as, you know, your comedic timing and, and the jokes that you hit better than others. And so season two, we had all that in mind. And so we didn't waste time. We just hit the ground running uh, and started on an amazing momentum and just slowly got even even more like quick and and just tight as uh, as we went along and so we were all really really proud with the second season even before we saw any of the footage back because we just knew that what we were doing was so far beyond what we had been doing last year and I'm just proud of, of everyone in the cast because uh, they pushed me to be better as well. It's always interesting because I feel like a season one and a season two of a TV show read are always going to be like they're both going to have different challenges from an acting perspective, because like you said, season one, you've never played this character before. So it's like an introduction to everyone, yourself, the audience and everything. And then season two, it's like, Oh, I played this character before, but you look at the writing and it's like, but wait, Oh, this character is like growing like every episode. Like what is happening? (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, that was, that was a huge thing that it took me a minute to grapple with in season two where, you know, Jake had a very defined arc in season one. We knew where he was going throughout and we followed him along on this, this ride that he was on, you know, figuring out who he wants to be as a person, you know, kind of set apart from the rest of his family. And now in season two, where the family believes that all the, you know, the, the chaos and the, and the uh, trouble has subsided and they can live their normal lives. You have Jake now having, you know, all the time in the world to figure out what he wants to do as a person. Like, he's now fully accepted that he's that he's different and that he wants to pursue that but now it's like okay dude like now go put that into the world like <laughs> how do you want to make this happen now you've done the change yourself and now you got to put that out there so he was in a huge state of change throughout the whole season was it was it different reading season 1 scripts versus season 2 scripts as as an actor like did it feel or did it feel kind of like mindset was kind of similar absolutely i mean what what's crazy is Jake has definitely taken a lot more of a supportive role uh, in this second season, specifically with with Amy, because Amy's got a lot going on now, you know, facing this role as the leader of villains. And and now she's starting to question her place and, and figure out where she wants to be. And, and there's family Jake, too is questioning it too. <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah. And then there's Jake being like, hey, like I've I'm I'm going on this journey right now and I'm I'm here for you. I have your back. And so to have that very, you know, comforting, caretaking kind of character who's just at the end of the day, like despite all the sibling rivalry and, you know, the the antics that the family gets up to, he is always there for them in the most loving way. And I love playing that part of Jake because it's just so wholesome and it, it's what brings the family together, in my opinion. And I feel like this show is such a unique, like it's it's such a fun, comedic, unique take on supervillains. Like supervillains have always been around pop culture. Like they've always been there. There's been obviously this boom of comic book culture, geek culture and everything where I feel like there's been a surge a little bit, Reed. I think there's been a big kind of bump in popularity with these things. So I was just curious, what is it like kind of from a storytelling actor perspective working on a project where like 
super villains are like the focal point, right? Family of villains and everything at a yeah. time where there is a big appetite for this content. I'm curious about that. I think it's great because there's a lot of, you know, other, you know, substances of inspiration to, to draw upon, especially with, you know, Izzy talks a lot about WandaVision and how much she drew from that. And I think that's, that's very applicable. I mean, even, even within the, the, the more Disney realm itself, like, you know, we, we all watched Descendants and things like that to kind of get an idea of that, that kind of vibe that they're going for of really humanizing these villain characters and seeing why they have the perspectives that they have and slowly starting to unpack that and see what's behind that. Like, it's a very, like intuitive introspective kind of look into characters that I think is really interesting and what better character type to do it with than villains because for the longest time you know villains have been represented as this very one-dimensional kind of character that's just there to be the antagonist for the protagonist and now it's like, let's flip that on its head and see what makes them tick it's really fun and we don't even some of the villains we've seen from some of the most popular kind of Disney movies of all time if you think about it we don't even know like how they got there you know, no, like, I want all. more origin stories. <laughs> For sure, yeah. That's. I mean, we we. I mean, we would talk about on set like the you know the Cruella movie and and all that stuff, really giving us a look at why these characters are the way that they are, and then caused us to then go, uh, like I said, introspective out of our own characters. Like, what do you like? Because we we don't know what the uh, the backstory is of these characters until obviously we're told in the writing. So we're left with a lot to kind of try to picture as we go along and, and create that part of the character for ourselves. And so having that information from what, you know, others have done kind of helps us go on our own little journey with our characters. Yeah. And, you know, the cast of, of the show is, is very tight and it literally is like a family. Like you're not like, Absolutely. Yeah. And I do want I do I do want to ask because I I find this really curious because you know obviously there's going to be you know some downtime and you're shooting and everything and you have time to kind of you know hang out with the cast and everything. I'm curious though, and the answer to this question might be there I, there isn't much, right? You just go in and do it. But like, what are the conversations like with your cast members about the content and the shows itself, like about the scripts and the characters before kind of going in and shooting? Like that interests me. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're always talking, you know, in the, in the cast lounge in between scenes or whatever on rehearsal days during yeah. lunch. Or whatever. Um, and our, our cast is big into theorizing as far as how the plot's going to go. <laughs> we obviously don't know until, you know, the episodes uh, come to us. So we're, we spend a lot of time on those couches trying to figure out where it's going to go based off where we're coming from, what we'd like to see from our characters, things like that. And, you know, we, we often like to, you know, come up with our own scenarios. It's like, Oh, if I were to write an episode, like this is, this is what I would like to do or see the family in this situation or that, and really try to push the boundaries of our characters and see what, you know, what we can get away with, to be honest. Um, and it's fun because we're always, you know, challenging ourselves to just really think about the show as a whole in the big picture and 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 just make sure that we're all kind of on the same page because, you know, that really dictates how we play uh, on on stage, whether it's, you know, on the more comedic beats or in the serious beats, um, which there are quite a few very, you know, down to earth, sincere beats throughout the second season that I think people are going to really resonate with. Do you, does it ever hit you that, you know, the villains of Valley View is like a genre bending show read? Do you ever think about that? The fact that there is kind of a lot thrown into one specific Disney channel show? Um, it didn't occur to me until I started to see response from people who were yeah. watching it and, and fans because that was one of my first reactions. I'm like, there's literally everything in here. Obviously, it's family and it's funny, but this is like a superhero. Like the superhero supervillain component is like really in the show. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that I remember like the first kind of taste that I got with that was when we filmed the pilot way back in uh 2021. Um, because of course on a pilot episode, you're filling it with all the things you're going to see throughout an entire season into one episode. Mm -hmm. So we had an episode that was about, uh, the villain backstory and moving to Valley view, but then also this, uh, uh, music storyline with you know, Amy wanting to start a band and all this stuff that was all packed into one episode. Yeah. And we were all like, Whoa, like there's a lot going on. And just to see how that's kind of spread through now two seasons worth of content 
is amazing because yeah. now they can do what, really whatever they want. It's amazing. I think that it's just, it's called "This Is Where the Party's At." I think from the, the yes. that's a bop. That is a tune. That's a very Absolutely. good song. <laughs> that was a, that was a fun episode to uh, to film for sure because I I had never done any of the. Uh, the more musical scenes in the show because uh, Izzy and Caden had done uh, the last one in season one and they were like, hey, we want you to join for this one and you're going to pick up Izzy and throw her into the crowd and it's going to be a whole fun beat. Um, and it was it was interesting to see what that process is like too because you have to then work in kind of syncopation with the music and work all the beats out and rehearse it. Um, it was all very technical, but it was, it was a lot of fun because then you got to hear the song in every stage of development. Totally. And just kind of a general question for you. I mean, Reed Horseman is a storyteller. That's what you do. And I feel like mm. storytelling, you know, just kind of stems from, one, we like to tell stories. But I feel like we just love making things. You know what I mean? Do you agree with that a little bit? Like, I do feel like there is this kind of appreciation for wanting to work with an incredible amount of people and make something and kind of throw it out there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I talk about this with my friends a lot. It's kind of a, you know, just internal like fire that constantly needs to be fed at all times. Like whether it's through, you know, acting on villains or or trying my hand at writing things or or with music with my friends, whatever, like I constantly need to be doing something. Otherwise, I'm sitting at home on my couch, like going insane because it's like I need to be doing something and yep. I feel very unproductive when I'm on. So that that fire is always kept alive when I'm, when I'm working with really, really uh, inspiring and influential people who uh, challenge my ideas and then cause me to, to, to just really push the boundaries of my creativity, which I love. It's awesome to be in that kind of situation at, at all times. A hundred percent. And you know, your show is on the Disney channel, which basically means that you are part of the Disney family, which is crazy. And absolutely. What is that like? Because just knowing the incredible kind of rich kind of catalog and worlds that Disney just constantly pumps out. What's it like being part of that? I mean, I know it's a big question, but just what's that like? It's I mean, it's a lot of responsibility, you know, because every every show that had uh, come before us was was influential in our childhoods. You know, we talk a lot about um, great examples being both Lab Rats and Wizards of Waverly Place because, you know, Chris and Brian. Ryan, who created Lab Rats, bring a lot of that influence into our show. But then our almost our entire crew was on Wizards of Waverly Place. So then they bring a lot of their expertise into our show as well. And so we feel a very heavy responsibility to kind of carry on that legacy in the best way that we know how. Um, but it didn't really feel real to be a part of that family until after season one came out. Because up to that point, we had just been in the studio in our own little world, you know, making the show in the bubble. And then when our cast started to get invited to go to more things and interact with other Disney casts, it got really real. Cause then they're like, Oh, we heard like they had known about us. They had known about the creation of our show and they hadn't met us. And it's like, it's this massive web of community that they were so like, Oh, like welcomed us with open arms. It was amazing uh, to be a part of that. And now uh, to, to be in that circle and, and, learn from all the other actors who have worked before us is, is really enriching for us. And it helps us every day on set. And, you know, because of like, you know, social media too, I, like clips and memes and gifts of these shows are like literally here to stay. Like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I've started to see the villains of Valley view like reels as well, like pop up on feeds. It's great. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, it caught me by surprise once I was uh, scrolling through TikTok, and then I see this like, fan edit of of uh malachi in one of the scenes from season <laughs> one and i look at it and i didn't clock it at first but there was like 1.3 million likes i'm like whoa like i didn't know people knew about us that much and then you scroll like the seemingly infinite comments just about the show and, and how much people like it and you're like this is amazing it was and like really... the worldwide reception too right like people all over yeah. the world yeah it, it, it's cool because every time villains uh comes out in another country it's like this new just boom of people who, you know, want to, to interact with us and are, are just sharing the love on our, on our social media pages. And it's really great to see how it's slowly spreading to more and more people and, and that they're resonating with it. A hundred percent. And uh, episodes of season two of the Villains of Valley View are rolling on a Disney channel. 
finally. I mean, the wait is over. Like they're finally coming. The wait out is over, and days. and uh, Disney Plus as well. First five are all on Disney Plus. It's crazy. I watched That's them cr- like the airport yesterday. That's so crazy. Uh, Reed, thank you so much for coming back on the show. So great chatting with you, man. Of course, thank you for having me. Absolutely, it's a blast. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, so they can watch those episodes, Disney Channel, Disney Plus, and then if they just find if they put like Reed Horseman on Instagram, they'll find you, right? They will find me. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Because there's two ends. It's a horseman of two ends. It's yes, there's two ends. That's always the trick. Look for the two ends. That's the Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Till next time, it's the Reed Horseman and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.